Alright guys, welcome back to another T. Malakowski Adventures. We had quite the adventure last week. We um, went up to Uray, Colorado and ran some of those beautiful trails up there. And we were coming down... What trail was that? I don't remember. From Hurricane Pass. From Hurricane Pass. And my transfer case started making this really horrible grinding noise. Which we knew um, the Terra Low had some issues in it before because I had a pump. My pump went out yeah. whenever we were in Moab last year, which caused everything to overheat. And so the little washers that, inside. That bearing right in there got fried. It fried. Yeah, it ate the whole thing apart. And so there was a ton of metal shavings in there that time and we were real bummed. Because Terra Low does not make the 4 to 1 for the MP231s anymore. So, when that happened, we're like, oh man, I hope it's not what we think it is. We took it apart. And you see all these metal shavings in here. This is the pickup magnet. You can't even tell there's a magnet there because there's so much metal. It's insane. And then over here, where the, where the oil, we replaced this whenever we came back from Moab because the pump was out, right? Well, if you've got so much metal in your pickup that you can't suck up any oil, that makes the pump go out too. So we're probably gonna have to replace that again. But on the plus side, the uh, the main shaft, I think it's the main shaft, was all, right was all eaten up before and we had to replace that last time. But this time it's still good. So when we pulled it out, that gave us a little bit of hope. But upon taking out the gears, this this is what we see. This is the Terra Low four to one. These, this is it got so hot in there. These, see if I can find a good one. There's only one good one left. These copper washers. Here's the one good one left. See that copper washer right there? Those are the spacers. All the rest of them have melted away or are so flattened out from getting so hot. That, look at the play. Look at that. There's a copper washer completely flattened yep. out from the heat. Not really sure why they use copper washers. Copper is a really soft metal. So anyways, but. I am going to, since Terra Low does not make this planetary gear set anymore, you cannot buy it. I'm going to attempt to fix this. I don't know if it's going to work. I don't know if I can fix it, but I'm going to attempt it. There's a, a shaft that goes in here. You can tell they put some punk, punch marks here to hold it. And then on this side, it's welded. So I'm going to grind these welds. I'm going to take these little cross shafts off each of these gears here. And I'm going to try to fix this. I might be wasting my time. I don't know. Okay, so we got the planetary gear set apart. These go in here like this, and these are the copper washers that used to be between here. And as you can see, they have melted and flattened out all of them. Even this is the best one, but it's still, you can tell it's flatter than it's supposed to be. So this is what my plan is. Oh, let me tell you this. Look at also these little shafts right here. This is what ran through there. I only got one out without breaking it, but look at the wear on that. And it just, and see how sloppy that is? There's supposed to be a bushing in here and there was no bushings on any of these gears. So the only conclusion I can come to is that that was a copper or some soft metal bushing in there that just completely melted out of all of these. There's a ton of metal inside the transfer case. So anyways, this is the plan to fix it. So we got some grade eight bolts and these are just the right size. They're three eighths. These will go in here, right here. They do fit. It's got to be cleaned up a little bit. And then, so these will go in through here, and then I'm going to cut the threaded part off, and then cut the head off, and it'll be welded back how they had it, welded back here. So this will take the place of this cross shaft, 
And then to make up for the bushing in here, what I'm going to do is we got some, this is quarter inch galvanized pipe from Home Depot. It fits perfectly right in there for a bushing. It's a little tight, but I, I'm going to grind down the galvanization a little bit, smoothen it out, and it'll fit right in there nice. And then the bolt, which goes through there, it doesn't fit. At first, but I drilled it out with a 3 8 bit, so it fits nice in there. So we'll cut one little sleeve to go in here, and then another little sleeve to go in here, and then everything should fit nice and snug. And to replace the copper washers, these grade 8 washers are just the right thickness to go right in here. A little snug, but I'm going to clean them up a little bit with some sandpaper, and they'll be perfect. So see, that'll fit right in there. If anybody knows why TerraFlex uses a copper washer here, please let me know in the comments because it doesn't make sense. I mean, if you get too much heat, this is what happens to them. I'm replacing them with steel washers. And so if anybody thinks that this is a dumb idea and is not going to work, please let me know why you think that. Because I think it'll work. I'm going to try it. We're going to put it together with all these Home Depot parts. And we're going to run it, and we're going to see how long it lasts. Mm -hmm. So it'll be a good test. In, in a couple months from now, probably two months from now, we're going to take this transfer case back apart because we're putting in a Northwest Fab Echo Box, uh, which requires us to put in a new input gear. This is a 21 spline. We need a 23 spline for the Echo Box. So I'm going to have this transfer case back apart in about two months, so we'll be able to see after I get it back together, if this is gonna fix the problem. So stay tuned, we'll see. All right, so this is what I got so far. I've got, I took my quarter inch pipe and I made these little spacers and they go right in here, right in there. Nice and good. And then this is a 3 8 grade 8 bolt. I cut the threads off and cut the head off. So that goes in there, gives me a nice, nice tight fit in there. And then these washers are grade 8 washers, which are going to take the place of my spacers. So as you can see, I've got all these in, except for that one I wanted to show you. But look at everything spins really nice and it's tight in there. There's a little bit of looseness in that one's got a little bit, but that's sure better than it was when I put this transfer case together a year ago and it lasted a year. So I would, I don't know how close the factory tolerance is, but these are pretty good. I think it's going to work. So my next step is on this side, you can see where I grinded the weld out. These are the welds from these cross pieces. So I've got to fill this back in with weld. But I think I'm going to put, I'm going to tack it and put it back in the case and make sure everything works really good. And if it does, then I'll finish rosette welding each of these and then uh, we'll be ready to put this thing back together. Woo -woo. So this is where we're at in fixing our planetary gear set. I made a mistake. See that washer right there? It's too big. And I had everything put together. I had these all welded in and we tried to put it in this ring gear over here. And it wouldn't go in. We tried to force it in. Wouldn't go in. Wouldn't go in. Never occurred to me that it was because of this washer. It wouldn't go in. And I darn near ruined the ring gear inside of the case trying to force it in there. So anyways, now this is the point we're at. I ground all these welds down. You can see I kind of started to push the pins back out. I just left them. But uh, I got to knock these pins back out to get the gears back out and put in a smaller washer here. And after that, it should slide into the ring gear. Because, I mean, it turns nice now. Yeah. It turns really nice inside this case, inside the, the, the cage here. Mm -hmm. But once we get it in the ring gear, it wouldn't turn at all. And it's because of this barely little, you see this little tiny bit right here that sticks out? That's just enough to not allow those gears to drop inside of those gears. Exactly. So, 
I'm going to come back and fix this now, and then, hopefully, we'll be able to start putting it together. Yes, Lord willing. This is some grease in there, though. All right, guys, so now we, um, we have successfully on the second try <laughs> got this once we got the washers down it literally dropped right in there it's right in there and there's not even any grease in it right now and look at it spins really nice look at that so these got to be i got to come back and weld these shafts in yet they're I, ha I had to recut them back off but uh inside of here this ring gear right there no exaggeration, I bet we spent at least eight hours grinding on those teeth to try at to least. get this to fit when all it was was that washer that was washer too big. That washer was too big. And I just had to shave the washer down a little bit to where it fits like that, and it's perfect now. Talk about being mad at yourself. <laughs> Man, we were pretty... Um, I'm just glad it was, it was able to be resolved. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys, we just wanted to add a quick little tidbit when you're putting this back together. Um, this is the bearing retainer. Whenever you put a seal onto a, a machine surface like that, put some grease on it so that when it starts spinning, it's not spinning dry because that can ruin the seal. Mm -hmm. Also, this little thing, this is very important on an NP231. This has to line up with this hole. Because if it doesn't, it won't oil, right. it won't oil this bearing properly. There. Yep. Mm. And then the bearing would overheat, and that would be a no bueno. Yeah, it would be a, a problem. Let yeah. Me get this uh, a little bit of silicone out of that. Yeah. So just wanted to share with you guys because uh, it's, it's minor, uh, but it's important. Yeah. You do that. Yeah. We got the transfer case all back together. It seems to be turning pretty good, and it's back in the Jeep finally. We're getting ready to put the yokes on, but I wanted to take the opportunity to give some advice on this. Before you put the yoke on, put some grease around here so that when it runs on that seal, it's not running dry. That'll protect your seal. So grease on here. Another thing that I've learned, I always put a little bit of, a little bit of silicone on the splines right in here before I put the yoke on that keeps oil from seeping up the splines and leaking behind this nut. Then lastly, when you put the nut on, make sure you lock tight it. I've had these come loose more than once. You gotta lock tight them and they gotta be torqued pretty hard. I think it's like 150. So silicone inside, grease outside, lock tight on the nut. I always do that and I think it's a good habit to have. So we're gonna do this, put the drive shafts on, Put the skid plates on and we should be ready to test her out. Test See how low range out. works. All right guys, so update on the whole transfer case four to one rebuild. We got everything together and everything seemed to go together pretty good. And we took it for a little test run. Everything was working good. So we decided to go back up to Colorado and finish up the trails. We wanted to run Black Bear since they had it open and hang out for a few more days there. Well, the first day we were running up Corkscrew to get to Poughkeepsie Gulch. And I only made it to the first place where there's a bathroom, if you know that trail. That's, it's not really that far into the trail, but I heard this pop in my transfer case and it kind of like slipped out of gear for a minute and I put it back in gear, but it sounded louder than normal. Like I could hear my gears and that wasn't, you know, something's not right. And then we felt my transfer case and it was so hot that you couldn't even keep your hand on it. So needless to say, I didn't get to wheel those days. I did still get to go down the trails. But um, 
we were anxious to get home and take everything apart so the popping sound <laughs> that I heard was this gear right here so you can see there's some there's some major heating that went on right here it welded itself shut so Michael tell me tell me about this what we determined upon taking things apart okay this is where we screwed up there was this is, I used a grade 8 bolt for this cross shaft and there, it needed to have an insert in the gear here well I used a piece of galvanized pipe for the insert because I thought that the ATF would be able to get in there and lubricate everything well I was wrong and there's too much friction in there as you can see it welded itself the bolt the pipe and the gear are now, now one piece on this one. It just welded it. And then so when it did that, it broke right here, Twisted which was right the, off. which was the popping sound that Kayla heard mm -hmm. when she was driving. And it popped out of gear because this thing was broken. So we're going to give up on the four to one. But we have a plan to get the Jeep back on the road. And that is we're going to put the 2.7 to 1 stock transfer case back in. Then we're going to go get a Northwest Fab Echo Box and put 2.7 to 1 in there. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to move the engine forward. It's a four cylinder. There's about 10 inches between the fan. Let's go up here. 10 inches between the fan and the radiator. So if we move the engine forward, to here I'll still have room for the, the stock fan and then we'll have the eight inches that we need to put the echo box between the transmission and the transfer case the transfer case our plan is to keep it in the same spot so the yeah. drive shafts will stay the same mm -hmm. the advantage of having a four cylinder yeah so we're gonna use this space here so that's our next project and that'll be another video installing a Northwest fab echo box in a four cylinder Wrangler That'll be a good, yep. pretty good project. We ordered parts, and Gotta we have know. to just wait. We're going to put a new clutch in it while the transmission's out. Mm -hmm. Might as well give her a good old tune-up. And also, we're going to put in a new oil. We're going to take the oil pan off because it's got a big dent. Let's look at this. Oh, yeah. Look at the oil pan. We're going to put a helmet on it. The oil pan's been dented in, so we're going to take the oil pan off. Because the rear main seal's leaking, you can see when we took the clutch off, it's leaking. So we'll just take the pan off, fix this. I'm going to build a little skid plate helmet for it, and then we'll replace the main seal too, as long as everything's apart. Yeah, might as well. Yeah, and so that's it for trying to fix the four to one. I guess we gave up on it. Yep. So, anyways, the result of this, her Jeep's still going to be better off because she'll have her stock transfer case gearing 2.7 to 1, which is good for cruising around in the desert and light trails and stuff like that. But then she can couple, she'll have it in four low, so she'll be at 2.7. Then she can put her transfer, or lock the echo box in, yeah. shift that on. That'll multiply that, or double that crawling to, to 4.7. 5.4. Yeah, 5.4 5 .4 will be her rock crawling gear. Yeah, it'll so, make up for my It'll 40s. make up for the big tires, so mm -hmm. we'll have uh, plenty of gearing then, Yeah, I think, after that. It'll be a big improvement from 4 to 1. Yeah. So, that's what that's the plan. Yep. So, she'll be in the garage for a little while. Stay tuned. We should have a Ready by Chili Challenge. Yeah. <laughs> Hope to see you guys there.